Welcome to Coffee House. We have a discussion episode. This is Elon Musk by Ashley Vance. What is the subtitle? Tesla, SpaceX, and a quest for a fantastic future. So we read the book. We had that episode. We discussed it. Went through a lot of the particulars of Musk's life, his personality, his philosophy when it comes to running these companies. And now we are in a discussion episode which tries to amplify some of the ideas that kind of arise from the book that we just read. So the question for today is, what are the biggest ideas? Now Musk, his main motivation, the thing that he is most interested in, is the big idea of making us an interplanetary species. That is a a noble cause. That is a very interesting cause. And kind of one of the biggest things that one can think about. I, I also discussed, I think, in the previous episode about how he wanted to mine asteroids for minerals. So these are kind of the biggest things that our species can hope to do from this perspective, from the position that we have right now. So what other big ideas are left? We, in this contemporary moment, are kind of at a disadvantage. We have our advantages, but we also have our disadvantages. Because in any given discipline, we're going to learn more over time, which in many is going to raise the barrier to entry. It's going to take more to be able to competently apply oneself in these various disciplines and more to be able to revolutionize them because so much more has been discovered in each one of them. Now, in some, you're going to be able to know what is correct more quickly, which is great. So you're going to be able to omit what is incorrect in those areas, but likely in most, there's going to, it's going to take more, just like when it comes to computer science versus something that, you know, 40 years ago, if you were just getting into it, like plumbing or something, I'm sure plumbing has come a long way since I, I don't want to denigrate plumbing, <laughs> probably has its own myriad complexities that are comparable to that in computer science. But if you're trying to get into different disciplines, even if it's plumbing, then likely the things that have been discovered over the course of the decades that it's been a profession it's going to take more time now to be able to learn all those things and enter the profession and do something that's revolutionary with it than it would have, you know, 40 or 50 years ago. Where you can saunter in and grab a joist. Is a joist a thing? I think a joist is a thing. I don't think it has anything to do with plumbing, though. <laughs> anyway, the, the point is that higher barriers to entry. So Musk has space travel, or he's got, at least, he's got a mission to Mars. He wants to get to Mars to do that. One thing that I was considering is that if you dramatically change the chemical composition of any one of these planets or start building on it, is it not a concern that you're going to throw its orbit into disarray or something like that? I, I'm not really sure how any of that would work. I guess that's why we have, you know, physicists, astrophysicists. and Anyway, so that's what Musk is interested in, is getting to Mars and being an interplanetary species. There was a, a video game that I played as a kid. It was called Xenogears. I don't know how many have heard of this thing. It was made by Square. It's got just this fantastic sci-fi fantasy storyline. And the beginning of the game, so I'm not giving a a whole lot away, but the beginning of the game has an entire civilization that exists in the midst of space travel. It exists on this giant spaceship where they grow their own food and they live, they inhabit this over the course of generations and something goes awry, you know, in this. But could we be that kind of a species? You know, an itinerant, vagrant species that just wanders the cosmos, a la Star Trek, and live that way and see what kind of adventures we can run into and how many purple people we could have sex with. So that could be another big idea, but uh, what other big ideas are there, really? If you're trying to sit down, if you are, you know, a young kid in today's world and you're sitting down, you see things like NFTs, you see cryptocurrency, you see the metaverse on on the steep uptake. But so you wonder, what are the big ideas? Where where are the open areas for somebody, you know, like Magellan? Where can you look anymore to really do something new and novel related to our species? For me, the big area is artificial intelligence. I mean, that is the thing that, although it seems like they've got a handle on it, you know, all the smartest people in the world working on this problem, they're doing some incredible things with it. But it does feel, you know, just like with psychology, it feels like something that's pre-Copernican, that there are such incredible strides to be made. And I share Elon Musk's concern when it comes to the development of artificial intelligence and some kind of a a threatening singularity that we could run into because we don't have the capacity to truly understand what's going on with something that's too complex. I don't know if I would have said that or been as concerned just a few years ago, but seeing how people are responding to COVID and the kinds of authoritarian insanity that's going on around the world and the 
of just childish certainty about all sorts of things, even in the face of contradictory empirical data that's obvious. <laughs> even if everything was just uh, dovetailing perfectly when it came to the evidence or when it came to the risk-reward calculation, still, uh, the institutions in power, the people who get to make broad decisions for a whole bunch of other people, they should be capable of having just an immense amount of humility and much more reverence for things that are beyond them, that are more important than their extremely short-term re-election bid or, or whatever else, the amount of money that they can make for their their donors and multi-billion dollar corporations. You, you would hope that people have a greater wisdom than that, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So you could see just an insane short-sightedness when it comes to the development of something like artificial intelligence, where people just want to get ahead, just want to develop something. And so they're, they're sprinting, and they run into something that they just simply do not in any capacity understand because it's far too complex for them to, no matter how smart they are as, as the naked primate. So AI, that's uh, where I think big ideas can arise. And there are different ways that you can use it. You know, the one kind of obvious application is the artificial intelligence doing the things that we don't want to do. You know, that's the straightforward one. Just you can build AI to clean the dishes or do the laundry or handle complex calculations that would take us years and years to do. And they can do it in seconds. Another application is to not just handle the things we don't want to do, but revolutionize the things that we need, like industries, like a food production and development like car manufacturing and safety standards where you could have ai that cleans up or something like traffic even just traffic that's the one thing that i'm looking forward to the most is is so we don't have the tiny events that ripple all the way back where you have one driver who is a little too hesitant or something like that and it causes a, a whole bunch of problems all the way down the line so you could have ai that revolutionizes the way that we're able to travel from one place to another so that's a kind of a step up when it comes to the application. And then you have another application that would be much more intrusive and much more concerning, but something like AI that would facilitate happiness or begin hacking psychology or hacking biology to help us be better people, to help us uh, live longer. And AI relationships or relationship evaluators so that are, are capable of encouraging or guiding or facilitating people into having better relationships with each other. Now, those areas, facilitating happiness, hacking psychology, developing positive relationships, those areas are ones where it becomes a grave concern that you are losing humanity in the midst of technological manipulation. You know, one thing about social media, one thing about the things we spend so much time doing now and the ease with which we can get from one place to another and, and communicate with people that we care about and people that we don't care about. One thing about all those things is that it doesn't necessarily help us. It doesn't necessarily do a good thing. It's it's not necessarily better for us to have the kind of efficiency at our fingertips that we have now. There are certainly positive things about it. There are great. It's easy right now to be able to get information that I might need about anything. You know, I can find at any time. I can pull it out of my pocket instead of having to trek to the library. Although that was a much more rewarding experience, and therefore probably uh, invested more time and effort into doing it there instead of just oh, I looked it up on Wikipedia. And so now I've got a complete understanding of this discipline. But the question would be, okay, where does the technology end and the person begin? There's something in the biological and neurochemical alchemy that makes a person that has been important for hundreds of thousands of years. There's something in that, in that creativity, in that spark of wisdom, in the ability to be able to do incredibly smart and incredibly stupid things as a species and even as an individual in many cases, that provides such variety and variability that seems like it could so easily be lost if we leave it up to artificial intelligence or machines. Now, the things that I would want to see them do is be able to guide people into better understanding themselves and better understanding the ways to communicate with other people rather than being some kind of a, a means of manipulating what people think or what they should think or what they want or don't want but there's tremendous concern and that's leaving aside you know all the concern for uh like the what is it august 29th 1997 the terminator 2 judgment day kind of a an ai that would physically cause a tremendous amount of problems and could do so instantaneously and would have so many more effective military tactics that it would just be in the blink of an eye we would have lost 
that's leaving all that aside. But so there are certainly concerns. I mean, obviously the concern goes up with the involvement and gravity of the thing that the the AI is doing. If they're only doing the uh, the vacuuming, then it's not something we have to worry about so much. But anyway, so the the kind of broader thing here is what is the big idea? What are the big ideas anymore? What are the things that are are massive and accessible and romantic and the kind of crossing the frontier adventures that that we had as a species, you know, for so long that we might not have as much anymore. Now, for Elon Musk, obviously, we, we've got Mars. And that seems like that kind of an idea to me. It's more difficult to see it in the, in the face of something like crypto, uh, which, I, I mean, it's uh, an incredible thing, and it could lead to some of the most democratizing developments that we've seen in human history. It absolutely could. Uh, but so did social media. I mean, social media was incredibly democratizing too, but it is likely more a bane on the way that we interact than it has been a boon. So those are just some some thoughts that kind of sprung from the idea of who Elon Musk is and what came out of his biography. I'm actually rereading it now because I'm ahead a bit on the books. So I'm, I'm rereading it so I can get more of the information out of it and take what I can from that. There are four books. I saw this on something, but there are four books that I saw that were recommended that everybody read every day. <laughs> and so I've started doing that and I'm, I'm going to let you know how that goes and we'll go over the books at some point. But anyway, I think I recommended the Elon Musk book by Ashley Vance. He is the most impressive human being right now, to me at least. The most impressive human being who's out there. And I really think that everybody should take note of the the adventure and romanticism that is being infused back into the human story. And I think that's uh, kind of a, a really important development. But uh, that's all that we're going to do today. It's a Saturday. It's not the Thursday that I'd hope to get this up but it's a Saturday. I hope everybody's having a good Saturday. And I'm going to get some other stuff done, and then that'll be the weekend, and then we've got next week, and we're just going to have to keep going, have to keep going. I got up on the uh, channel on YouTube and Rumble. I'm going to have up the first of the series where we're talking to artificial intelligence to try to glean what they're thinking and how they're thinking and where the technology is. And then we're going to go into a series. I've been trying to learn Python kind of in the background. But then we're going to go into a series developing uh, a chat bot. And we're going to have some pretty ambitious ends that we're going to try to be designing it for. So hopefully we get there. I think as I say in the first episode, if I knew how long this walk was going to be, I probably wouldn't even start it. So I'm not going to try to determine that ahead of time. And we're just going to go. We're just going to do it. But I hope all is well. I hope you're having a good January and a good 2022. And I will see you on the next one. All right, bye.